Ciencia Magistral del ciclo organizado por el Museo del Holocausto de Buenos Aires, La Humanidad Quebrada. A propósito del 80 aniversario de la, de la Operación Barbarroja y del inicio de la Shoah. La conferencia de hoy será sobre el holocausto en los territorios ocupados de la Rusia soviética, escala, características y memoria, a cargo del doctor Ilya Altman, a quien tendremos el honor de escuchar en su disertación con la moderación del doctor Emanuel Kant, historiador y especialista amigo del museo. Este ciclo se ha basado en el hito de la invasión nazi a la Unión Soviética, que catalizó el inicio del exterminio de los judíos europeos, junto con la muerte de unos 27 millones de rusos soviéticos, aproximadamente más de un tercio de los muertos totales de la Segunda Guerra Mundial. Si bien los campos de exterminio de la solución final se establecieron en Polonia, una parte importante del holocausto se desarrolló en el entonces territorio soviético. Aquella amplia zona conquistada por los nazis desde el Mar Negro al Mar Báltico, llegando casi a las principales ciudades rusas de Leningrado, Moscú y Stalingrado, era la región más densamente poblada de judíos antes de la guerra junto con Polonia. El derrotero de las políticas nazis en aquella vasta región tuvo expuestas a complejidades en cada una de las zonas y conductas diferentes tanto generales como particulares, de los actores involucrados. ¿Cómo se comportó la población local en términos de colaboración? ¿Hubo acciones de protección y rescate de judíos en, en medio de tanto terror y muerte? ¿Cuál fue el comportamiento de los grupos de resistencia judíos? Tendremos la posibilidad hoy de conocer una mirada desde la historiografía rusa de la mano del doctor Altman, a quien agradecemos su generosa predisposición de transmitirnos sus conocimientos. En nombre de la dirección del museo que compartimos junto con Fabiana Mindlin, agradecemos nuevamente al excelente equipo que diseñó y lleva adelante este ciclo, Bruno Garbari, Marcia Raz, Eliana Ambra, Jonathan Epstein, Brenda Fischer, Gabriel Merlo y a todo el maravilloso equipo del museo. Muchas gracias también a la brillante intérprete del ciclo, Dana Yoffe, Gracias al Auschwitz Institute y a su directora para Latinoamérica, Eugenia Carbone, por acompañarnos. Los dejamos a continuación con el estimado y querido doctor Emanuel Kahn para dar comienzo al evento de hoy. Muchas gracias por acompañarnos. Quisiera comenzar agradeciendo la invitación que me hiciera el Museo del Holocausto de Buenos Aires para oficiar como moderador de este panel que tiene como protagonista al doctor Ilia Altman. El doctor Altman, junto a su colega Ala Geller, constituyen dos figuras centrales de los estudios sobre el holocausto en la Federación de Rusia, donde han promovido la creación del Centro para la Investigación y la Enseñanza del Holocausto con sede en Moscú. Además, dirige el Centro Internacional para la Historia del Holocausto y Genocidio de la Universidad Estatal de, Humani de Humanidades, donde es profesor y es miembro del Consejo Asesor Internacional del Gobierno de Moscú. Sus publicaciones se dedicaron mayormente a indagar en cómo se caracterizó la persecución a los judíos durante la Segunda Guerra Mundial, el Holocausto, en el Frente Oriental. Esta obra, que resulta muy esclarecedora, se complementa con otra de las preocupaciones centrales de la producción del doctor Ilya Altman, el acompañamiento a docentes y escuelas en la enseñanza del Holocausto a través de la publicación de libros específicos y el dictado de cursos de formación docente. La presentación de hoy sobre el holocausto y la unión de repúblicas socialistas soviéticas, aniquilación, resistencia y rescate, es, para un público de habla hispana, una invitación a profundizar los conocimientos acerca de una experiencia poco conocida, pero que a su vez confirma el carácter global del holocausto. Tanto los países como los individuos, de diverso modo, se vieron implicados en la persecución a los judíos de Europa, ofreciendo respuestas diversas ante el genocidio que se estaba cometiendo. Invitamos al doctor Ilya Altman a iniciar su presentación. Good day, good evening to everybody who join us this late evening in Moscow, in the in Buenos Aires. Thank you very much to everybody who participated in my invitation, especially to the Jonathan, Emmanuel, and Marcia. And we are preparing this event some months. And for me, it's very important to come back to Buenos Aires after two years and a half after our exhibition 
and about the Holocaust and former Soviet Union and liberation, the camps was uh, a period in the parliament of uh, Argentina in May 19, uh, 2019. Now I will speak about the Holocaust in former Soviet Union. And uh, first of all, I will be tell that our center and my colleague published really a lot of books about this subject. And one of the more important this is the encyclopedia of the Holocaust in former Soviet Union that included about 2,000 special articles in each place where was ghetto or labor, uh, labor camp or more than 100 Jews was killed. So it was uh, really some another kind of the Holocaust than another place in occupied uh, Europe without gas chambers, uh, death camps, and crematoria. And first of all, I would like to ask Marcia to open my presentation and uh, uh, especially to uh, tell that uh, Soviet Union was involved in the Second World War in September, in September 1939. And the first question that was raised before the Soviet authorities, Soviet army, it was a question about refusals. Please open the next pages where I uh, tell you some words about the story that I paid attention during like uh, eight uh, years research together with our Japanese colleagues. It's a very famous story about the uh, Japanese the diplomat Chune Sugihara. You could see the, the Sugihara list where more than 2,100 Jews, refugees from uh, mostly Poland and some other countries was escaped through the Soviet Union. Usually mentioned about the uh, diplomats who gave the visas about the Japan who welcomed refugees, but we will pay attention to the Soviet authorities. After very strong discussion, first uh, answer of the Soviet authorities was not uh, give the to refugees opportunity to travel and through the territory of former Soviet Union. It was a very long journey from Kaunas to Moscow and then to Vladivostok. In only then April 1940, Soviet authorities uh, agree in principle to uh, give a permission for this transit. In these cases, uh, refugees should they pay the money, about $200 per each tickets and uh, traveling through the territory of Soviet Union. And only after the Soviet Union annexed the Lithuania in the June 1940, the refugees and thanks to the Sugihara visas traveling through the territory from the Soviet Union. Unfortunately, many Jews who were refugees afraid to travel. They think that NKVD will be arrested. So I ask to show another picture below. You could see so-called fake visas that was preparing. Marcia, please show the next pages. Yes, thank you. This is so-called fake visas, Japanese visas, that was preparing uh, some underground Jewish organization and the, with the thanks to these visas also 400 refugees traveling outside Soviet Union. And other hand, after the uh, Nazi occupied Poland in September 1939 and before the end of this year, about 300,000 Jews escaped from Poland directly to the territory former Soviet Union. And in this time, before the uh, June 22nd, 1941, uh, we could see the total number of Jews on the, so in the Soviet Union was more than 5 million uh, persons. Please, so next pages. 
you can see this is uh, the map uh, left side you could see how many Jews became the Soviet citizens after September 1939. The Soviet census in 1939 was more than 3 million Jews. As I mentioned, totally, it was about 5 million Jews. It was the biggest Jewish community in the, uh, Europe when, before the Nazi uh, invasion uh, on June 22nd, 1941. You could see that uh, uh, all Soviet territories that was occupied, where about uh, 70 million citizens, civilians, was stained in the Nazi hand and also another uh, uh, troops from Romania, from Hungary, from Italy, partly from, from, from Spain. And all Soviet occupied territory was divided to zone under army control biggest part and the other part and the civilians control and the fate of the jews very often was depend from the place where they live in the war zone most of them was very soon killed by bullets as i mentioned in the same place where this person still alive in in other places was established about 1000 ghettos it also the biggest number of the ghettos in the occupied Europe. It mostly was in Poland, less number also in Amsterdam and Budapest. But uh, you could see this is uh, in this ghetto, uh, about 2 million Jews uh, uh, lived before the destruction. The largest ghetto was in Lvov, Western Ukraine, and in Minsk, the capital of Belarus. The majority of the ghetto occupied Soviet unions uh, were in Ukraine. It's, uh, I show you the number of this ghetto. And it's very important that uh, uh, during the, uh, it was a special uh, uh, groups, Einsatzen groups, it was Einsatzen groups A, B, C, D, totally about uh, 4,000 person who organized the killing of the Jews. Please show the next pages. This is the map. It was presented during the Van Zee conference and was show the result of the activity. Only one group, Einsatz group A, that killed uh, before the Van Zee conference, totally, it was killed uh, uh, about 500,000 Jews as minimum. So before the final solution was declared in January 1942, Jews on the Soviet Union was killed and signed the autumn, uh, signed the August 1941, Nazi killed not only the men, but also women and children. And the symbol of the Holocaust in former Soviet Union, this is a Babi Yar. In this picture, it was made uh, by German photographer propaganda, uh, propaganda team. It was made in Babi Yar in Kiev in the beginning of October 1941. As we know, during two days, September 29 and September 30, uh, it was 33,000. 771 Jews, uh, according to the report of Einsatz Group uh, C, uh, was killed in Babi Yar in Kiev. It was the biggest number of the Jews that was killed uh, during one day. September 29, as minimum 22,000 Jews was killed. Never before, never after, during one day in one place, so many Jews never was killed. Nazi used the like the reason why they destroyed all Jewish population of Kiev without registration. They not received the yellow star or any other marks. Uh, they was not put in the ghetto. But the reason was some days before uh, Soviet uh, special uh, groups uh, they preparing. Uh, uh, destruction, the center of the Kiev, 
it was bomb and the many uh, Nazi officer was killed. And commandant of this city declared that all Jews should be destroyed. It had happened in Babi Yar, and today this is a real symbol of the Holocaust. Please, next pages. Uh, in, uh, in introduction, before my lecture, uh, my colleague mentioned the collaborants. We know that the Nazi idea, they started their aggression against Soviet Union with the slogan, the struggle against Judo Bolshevism. But it's very interesting. Not all the communists who still alive on the occupied Soviet territory was immediately killed. Many of them, mostly men, was really destroyed because the Nazi afraid the uh, underground movement, partisan, and so on. According to the Jews, in 42 places, mostly in Western Ukraine and Western Belarus, they were pogroms. More important, it was more famous, a pogrom in Lvov, where as minimum 4,000 Jews was killed. We know the pogrom in Kaunas, in many uh, small places. One of them is very, uh, very famous. This is Idwabna. Usually mentioned, it is a Polish uh, shtetl. But after September 39, Yedwabno was uh, the part of the Belostok region, Soviet Belarus. So in June 22nd, 1941, uh, it was the Soviet territory. So the reason why local population killed Jews, they uh, like use the, the Nazi slogan that the Jews supported the Soviet power. And in many places, we uh, know the examples how collaborants was involved in this activity. In these pictures, you could see the place where Jews of the small city Velish, not far from Smolensk, in the territory Russian Federation, modern Russian Federation, uh, was put to the ghetto. And you also see the picture when one uh, former policeman shows a place where ghetto was burned in the January 1942. When I found this document in the secret uh, archives of the former Soviet secret uh, service, uh, and now in the uh, also uh, preserved in the special archive Soviet secret service, uh, Russian secret service, I was very surprised because the name of the chief of this policy was in Ivan Denisov. And he was the chief of this police department only one day. Who knows a very famous novel by Alexander Solzhenitsyn with the title, One Day of Ivan Denisovich, will be very surprised. This is Polizai. Of course, it was not the hero of this novel, but he has the same name. And in the uh, 1960, he was punished to death by the Soviet court. Please show the next picture. Uh, here I present the main peculiarities of the Holocaust in the former Soviet Union. As we know, the Nazi occupation regime was really uh, more uh, like uh, very uh, difficult for still alive for all population of the uh, territory for the uh, Soviet Union. The destruction of the non-Jewish popul civilians population uh, also was made by Wehrmacht, by SS troops, and so on. Totally, in the former Soviet Union, according to the special investigation that was made the special commission during the, the war, it was as minimum 8 million Soviet civilians was killed directly by uh, Nazi troops. Among these 8 million was, according to our research that we made uh, uh, with our colleagues, also these figures what uh, uh, present in the book uh, that was written by Dr. Ishak Arad, former director of Yad Vashem, as minimum 2 million 600 Jews, Soviet Jews, Soviet citizens 
was killed on the Soviet territories in the bodies on the June 22nd, 1945. We have some discussion with our Polish colleague and some other colleague because part of this population, this minimum 1 million, lived before the September 79, 39 in Poland. But during the Nazi invasion, all of them have the Soviet passport. Who refused to receive the Soviet passport uh, in 1939 or 1940, uh, first half of 1941, <coughs> was sent to Sibiri or North. So we are really know that the, all this person who was killed, <coughs> Soviet Jews have uh, Soviet passport. So as minimum, about 40% of Jews that was killed who are victims of the Holocaust was killed uh, in the Soviet Union. And also we should be mentioned that uh, about 200,000 Jews from 14 countries, including Germany, Austria, Netherlands, France, uh, Czechoslovakia, and some other places, uh, some other states, uh, France and so on, was sent to the territory from the Soviet Union in three places, Riga, Minsk, and Kaunas, and most of them was destroyed. Very important, I mentioned at the beginning of my lecture that it was very strong Nazi propaganda. War against Judo-Bolshevism, declare Nazi, and then started the killing process for the Jews. It was as minimum 400 uh, uh, newspapers in Russian, uh, mostly languages, language that was published in the occupied territory. In each article mentioned the Jews and communists are the main uh, enemies of the Russian people. As I mentioned, this is, was local pogroms. Jews also was killing in the same places where they lived. And also uh, only about 10% of the Jewish population of the, from the territory Soviet Union, mostly from the uh, Western Ukraine, Western Belarus, was sent to the death camp and was killed outside the territory of the former Soviet Union. Please show another pictures. It's, uh, as I mentioned, from the uh, autumn 1941, the mass extermination uh, of Jews from foreign, foreign countries started on the territory from the Soviet Union, and the first victims were Jews from Hungary, then was deported from Hungary to the uh, Ukraine, not far from Kiev, in the places of the Kamenets Podolsk, and was killed uh, in, in, in this area. Also very important uh, point that the, not all the Soviet Union was occupied. It was only one country at, as well as England that was not occupied and that only part of the Soviet territory was occupied. So the Soviet authorities uh, was have responsibility for the uh, fate of the Jewish population. So this is was the questions about the, uh, uh, like, uh, uh, question of the evacuation, the question about the liberation of the first ghetto and other places, it's also one part of the history Holocaust in the Soviet Union. Here I show the uh, more uh, well-known uh, history of the Holocaust on the territory of Russian Soviet Federation Socialist Republic. So mostly this is a territory modern Russian Federation. And I show that uh, it was killed some different groups of the Jewish population, uh, like Krimchaks, Tats, and so on. Uh, so uh, called mountain Jews, uh, they also was killed uh, uh, on this territory. Also the fate of the uh, children from uh, Jewish children from the mixed married, uh, marriages. They also was uh, killed on the territory uh, territory of the Soviet Union. Uh, the number of the Jews that was killed on the territory of the Russian Federation, it was uh, about 200,000 people. And uh, also on the territory of the Russian Federation, 
in the Caucasus region was killed, the Jews that would escape from Ukraine, Belarus, Moldova, and so on. Many famous doctors who was evacuated in this area, also Jewish doctors were killed. Please show another. It's very important about the question about the resistance on the territory of former Soviet Union. It was a spiritual resistance, not in, only in Terezin, more famous places, spiritual re resistance. In some ghetto, mostly in the Baltic, uh, former Baltic state, like Kaunas, Vilnius, uh, some other places, existed theaters, schools, and some other kind of the spiritual resistance. More, many, uh, very often, the Jews. Uh, wrote diaries and so on. We know the example, very famous uh, Jewish Yiddish poet, Avraham Sutzkever. He was witnesses during the Nuremberg trial. They, uh, his group preserved the book from the famous Evo Institute in, in Vilnius. Please show another picture. Now I will be try to speak quickly. This is underground organization. On, uh, it was uh, more than 30, ghettos uh, where was armed resistance. More famous, it was ghetto in Belostok. It's a Polish ghetto, but it's the Belostok was uh, part of the Soviet Union. I show to you, it's very important for me, ghetto Gluboko, uh, about one uh, two months ago, died the last uh, uh, person who participated in the uh, army system in Globoko. And the first book that described uh, resistance and uprising in this ghetto was written in 1954 and published in Spanish in Buenos Aires, Brother Rayak. Uh, they worked together with uh, Ilya Renburg and Vasily Grossman for the Black Book, emigrated after the war to Argentina, and were the first authors who published the book about the Jewish resistance on the occupied Soviet territory. It was a very famous organization in the uh, ghetto of Vilnius and the leadership of uh, Itzhak uh, Wittenberg. And please, next. Jews was very active in the underground movement outside the ghetto. This picture, uh, 17 years Jewish girl, Masha Bruskina, it was a period in the Soviet uh, her, uh, textbooks, but her name was like unknown. When some researchers found her name and uh, presented her as Jewish girl, it was cannot, uh, it was not possible to, to publish that information in Soviet Union and of only after the collapse of the Soviet Union, the names of this lady, uh, she was uh, killed in October 26, 1941 in Minsk, became known in, uh, in my country and other country from the Soviet Union. Please, next. Uh, it's very important. This is the first ghetto manifesto, I think it's very uh, famous, it was written by uh, uh, Ava Kovner, another famous poet. It was published January 1, 1942. He declares that Jews should be uh, involved in the resistance. It, it really, many young Jews became the hero of the resistance. Please, next. Jewish partisan groups. This is very new and uh, important question. Some of this uh, person was famous, like uh, uh, Belsky Brothers, the Stuvia Belsky. Uh, we know the Hollywood film about the Belsky partisan band. We know that most of this partisan escaped from Novogrudov. It was another example of the resistance. And here you could see the partisan from Vilnius. Here, Abba Kovner, we spoke about his uh, name, who wrote the, uh, like, appeal to the resistance. Please, please, next. 
uh, it's uh, today very famous name Tatiana Marcus in Kiev. You could see the uh, post the uh, stamp that was used in Ukraine. She received the title Hero of Ukraine 206. And this young lady killed personally 20 Nazi officers. And uh, she was arrested and killed by Nazis in 1943. Next, please. Kremlin reaction to the Holocaust. You could see the leaders of the Jewish anti-fascism committee that was established and here in the right side, Ilya Ehrenburg, famous Russian uh, writers, uh, actors, and so on. In the autumn, 19, in the August 24, 1941, they uh, hold some events and declare the old Jews in the Soviet Union, uh, Nazi tried to kill. It was very important and helped for idea of the evacuation. Please show this table about the evacuation of the Jewish population. It's very important because it's helped to us to, to show how many Jews still alive on the occupied territory, how many was evacuated. According to the census, in the end of 1941, it was very important that about 25% of the person who escaped or evacuated were Jews. This is, does it mean the Jews know about the dangers for them? during the Nazi invasion. Please show the next table. Uh, one of the very important projects that was called by Jewish Antifascist Committee together the partners from United States and Palestine was preparing the Black Book. Left side, this is a Black Book that was published 1946 in uh, United States and uh, part of this book was connected with the history of Holocaust in the Soviet Union. At the same time, the Soviet version of the Black Book that was uh, present of the Nuremberg trial never was published in the Soviet Union. It's very important that in 1952 in Moscow had happened the trial against the leaders Jewish anti-fascist committee and the Black Book second time became like evidence about the Jewish nationalism, about their relation with America and so on. But in this uh, black book, it was included many pages that describe the participation of the local collaborants in the Holocaust. And uh, thanks to the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum, uh, we are together with Joshua Rubinstein, preparing and published an unknown Black Book 208. It was uh, all testimonies, evidence, diaries, letters that was not included in the uh, original text of the Black Book by Grossman and Ehrenburg. Next, please. Uh, right, you could see uh, Ilya Ehrenburg. Uh, this is top right and the uh, left. Uh, this is uh, Vasily Grossman. And also another writer, Russian writer, Alexei Tolstoy, who uh, wrote in Pravda in August 1943, very big article about the killing Jews on the occupied territory of the Soviet Union. This very important special question, how it was reaction in mass media in the Soviet Union on the Holocaust. You could find in the uh, literature that was published in Israel, United States, some other country, that it was rarely mentioned about the Jews. Recently, research that was made, it was published 100 articles that mentioned Jews, not only in the main Soviet newspapers and magazines, but also in local, pre uh, local press. It is the truth that mostly Jews was mentioned together with other victims. But other hands, it was uh, a lot of the special articles that was written by very famous writers. So Soviet people knows about the Holocaust. But the, when the Black Book cannot be, be published in the Soviet Union, when the Jewish uh, Fascist Committee was arrested for a long time, 
in the Soviet Union, historians don't publish any book and articles on the Holocaust. Please, next pages. When the subject appeared in the public consciousness, during the trials, trials against the uh, uh, Nazi collaborants, Nazi per perpetrators, and uh, you could see the special uh, department of the Soviet Secret Service tried to find all collaborants who was involved also in the killing of the Jews. I mentioned the example in Velish and the, how this policy, policeman was uh, uh, punishment by the Soviets. It was many, many examples. In these files, you could find a lot of information about the Holocaust. Next, please. There's a very important question about the righteous among the nations. This is a table that about uh, today, about 28,000 uh, person receive the title righteous among the nations. Uh, about 25% of them uh, were the Polish citizens. But please show the next table. We made the research about how many righteous among the nations survived Jews on the territory former Soviet Union. It was very interesting result that it was uh, uh, about uh, also 25% Polish righteous among the nation uh, survived Jews on the occupied territory Soviet Union. And also you could see uh, the citizens of the different now independent states that were part of the Soviet Union, they also received the title righteous among the nation, it is a very interesting story that uh, you could see that about 6,000 righteous among the nations uh, uh, were the heroes of the occupied territory from the Soviet Union. Next, please. One of the very interesting story of the Holocaust, this is liberation of Soviet Jews by Red Army. The first uh, Jewish community that was survived since to Red Army, you could see it was in November, Rostov, Don, and Kalinin, today Tver, Jews, it was a very big city where Jews was uh, liberated. Unfortunately, Jews of Rostov was perished during the second occupation is August 1943. 3,000 mountain Jews, when Nalchik, the capital of Kabardina Balkaria, was rescued in January 1943. The first ghetto that was liberated by the Soviet army was December 30, 1941. And uh, uh, you could see the very interesting uh, star. This is yellow star, but five corner star. It's uh, Jews in Kaluga should be used this star. It was a real symbol of the Judo Bolshevik. Next, please. Abroad, Red Army liberated Jews in many ghettos, like in Budapest, in the camps, uh, camps uh, more famous uh, uh, liberation in Auschwitz. Please uh, show next. About uh, 230 Jews, uh, Soviet uh, soldiers, was killed uh, during the liberation. You see the General Krasavin, very interesting story. He was a prisoner of Gulag before the January 1942. Then he was released, became the general. He liberated Auschwitz, his division liberated Auschwitz. He was awarded only one general who was awarded, awarded for the liberation Jews in Auschwitz. He died three years after the war, but he, was his rehabilitation has happened only 20 years after he dies. It's very interesting story that Auschwitz was liberated the former enemy of the people, according to the Soviet terminology. Uh, two person, more famous person who were liberated, Primo Levi in Auschwitz and uh, uh, another Leo Beck uh, was liberated in Theresa. And I found in Japan, I mentioned that I have very strong relation with this country. I work on the question 
uh, activity Chuno Sugihara, but uh, in one museum in Japan, I found very important letter. Please see below. This is letter that was written out of Fran, the father of Anna Fran, February 23, 1945. It was the day of the Red Army in the Soviet Union. Yet he wrote his mother. You could see there is mother. Hopefully these lines reach you to bring you and all beloved ones on you that I have been saved by Russians. He not only was saved, three months, Soviet doctors tried to help to him as well as many other prisoners that were liberated. And this was really very important activity of Soviet doctors. Many of them have experienced in the Leningrad help to seek uh, uh, citizens of the city. And so most of the uh, prisoners that was liberated for it at Auschwitz still alive. Next, please. Uh, we show the number of the Jews that were liberated by Red Army, totally as minimum 300,000 Jews, mostly in, of course, Hungary in Budapest, as minimum 70,000 70, Jews in this ghetto was liberated, but many uh, other country where Jews was liberated. So our exhibition that we presented, as I mentioned, in Buenos Aires and Montevideo, this exhibition still in the uh, Russian Culture Center in Buenos Aires. And I hope in the January 27, well, we celebrate the Holocaust uh, Memorial Day in the, uh, when the Auschwitz was, uh, uh, was uh, liberated by Red Army. I think this exhibition will be useful uh, and maybe showed in your new museum. Thank you very much for your attention. Bueno, muchas gracias, Ilia. Muy interesante tu presentación. Ha sido, como decía al principio, muy esclarecedora respecto de una experiencia que, sobre todo en, en América Latina, quizás un poco más en Argentina, por el peso que tuvo eh, la cuestión del holocausto tempranamente, conocemos un poco más, pero que aún así nos resulta un poco inhóspita. Así que te agradecemos mucho la presentación. Y tenemos dos preguntas puntuales que quisiéramos compartir contigo. La primera un poco estuvo respondida en tu presentación, pero quizás puedas profundizar eh, algo más. ¿Cuál fue la posición de el, del gobierno soviético, de la Unión de Repúblicas Sovi Socialistas Soviéticas, frente a la matanza de judíos por parte del nazismo? Y la otra es una pregunta más puntual, más empírica. Hiciste mención a un libro que se publicó en 1954 en Argentina. Si podrías recordarnos eh, cuál era el libro y quién era el autor. Thank you for this question. The answer on the first question is, in the beginning of the so great patriotic war, uh, like in the Soviet Union was the title of the struggle against Nazi, the political department of Red Army collected the information about Nazi atrocities. First of all, against the war prisoners. Some of them were Jews. Uh, secondly, against the women. It was important to show the soldiers that it necessary to have a struggle against Nazis. I was very surprised in these documents that was written in the summer 1941, when Red Army go uh, like uh, was not successful in the struggle against Nazis. They calculated this information. Uh, late in November 1942 was established a special commission investigation commission that calculated after the liberation all information uh, uh, again about the Nazi crimes included. What was very important, December 19, 1942, in the Soviet Union, in the main newspaper, was published not only mutual declaration, 10 countries and also uh, so-called the Committee of the Free France, so 11 countries declare Uh, and publish information about the fake Jews that was killed Nazi in Europe. 
but the same days in Soviet foreign office published the special big articles about the killing Jews in the Soviet Union. The information that Jews was killed, for example, in the ghetto in Poland, the period uh, very often in the Soviet newspaper. It was one point, information. Secondly, establishing the special uh, public organization, Jewish Anti-Fascist Committee, it was so-called public organization. It was under leadership Soviet Information Agency, Soviet Inform Bureau. But anyway, this committee leading by very famous actor, Solomon Mikhoels, informed Jewish population, informed all the world. They uh, traveling to United States and Mexico in 1943, uh, August, uh, autumn 1943, collected $20 million in the fund of the Soviet army and with support of the Kremlin. The question about the evacuation, it cannot to be sent Jews uh, separately for the other population. But anyway, I give the example figures of the Jews that successfully escaped from occupied territory and most of them receive some support of uh, uh, local authorities. I don't mention, it's very important, that about a half million of the Soviet Jews was a soldiers and officer Red Army, including my parents. My mother and my father met uh, during the Second World War and marriage in the summer 1944. Uh, it was a very like typical situation when many Jewish uh, soldiers uh, was in the army and uh, uh, many of them received the title hero of the Soviet Union. They have like the five position and uh, fourth position uh, in general who was awarded during the war. So it was a very important uh, part uh, of the struggle of the activity uh, of the Jews during the war. Unfortunately, in the end of the war and uh, later uh, anti-Semitic policy of the Soviet government, uh, the close any pages of the Holocaust, uh, history of the Holocaust uh, in my country. The second question connected with the book that was published in Yiddish. I mentioned Spanish, no, it uh, was my mistake. It was published in Yiddish, 1954 in Buenos Aires. The title, it was Ghetto Gluboko. Gluboko is the city now Vitebsk uh, uh, region of Belarus the ghetto where uprising was in the August 1943. The authors of this book, two brothers with the name Rayak. You could find in the black book that was published, uh, I was editor of this book, this black book was published in Spanish. So you could find the articles about Gleboko that was written by brothers Rayak. They was uh, some have some relation with Jewish anti-fascist community. Other questions? Bueno, gracias, Ilia, por las respuestas. Sorry, I... uh, gracias. Doctor Ili Adman por las respuestas y eh, hemos recibido algunas nuevas. Eh, ¿Qué nazis fueron juzgados en territorio soviético? Esa es una de las primeras preguntas. La otra es, ¿qué reflexión le merecen la diferencia entre la verdad histórica y la representación de los hechos, fundamentalmente en el cine como el de Hollywood, eh, en el cine estadounidense en relación a los liberadores? Una tercera pregunta es, ¿cuál fue el lugar relativo de Buenos Aires como centro de publicación de las matanzas de la Unión Soviética? Esa es una pregunta un poco más compleja quizás, Ilia. Eh, y finalmente, ¿consideran en Rusia que los alemanes cometieron genocidio con la, contra la población civil soviética y los prisioneros de guerra soviéticos? Son cuatro preguntas un poco más complejas.
for your questions. Muchas gracias for me, por, por todas estas one preguntas. Of the images of Para the mí, una de las Soviet... imágenes. Sorry. Uh, images of the Soviet una de las imágenes de los liberadores soviéticos. In... Uno puede encontrar. In... In the end of the film by Steven Spielberg. En la película de Steven Spielberg, la find the some Soviet soldiers on the horses that entered to Auschwitz. It's this typical Asian face. It's very interesting images of the Soviet liberator that appear. Uh, this is in the movie, Hollywood movie. But we know about some documentary film. One of them was made in Maidanek, and very important for me, it was the film about the liberators of Auschwitz. It was made by Crimean Tatarian Kenan Kutabzadeh. This film was shown during the Nuremberg trial. And we made our research, maybe it will be interesting for you, that our center established very unusual project. We tried to collect it, personal stories, about 25,000, Soviet soldiers, doctors, journalists, and uh, filmmakers who entered to Auschwitz in the end of the January 20, 1945. One of them was filmmaker, Crimean Tatarian Kutub Zadeh. His, he was born in Constantinople in Turkish. It's very interesting. And his family was deported from Crimea in 1944. So he are preparing this film and uh, his personal story is uh, of course, uh, very, very interesting. Second question is very important. It's your question, like the one step for the explanation, how not easy to teach Holocaust in my country and many other countries of the former Soviet Union, because it differs in uh, Germany in many uh, other countries that was occupied by Germans, most civilians uh, who were killed, were Jews. So not necessarily explain why Holocaust is a special topic. According to the Soviet documents, as minimum, 8 million Soviet civilians was killed by Balak and other uh, methods by Nazi. It was difficult, different methods how these civilians was killed. As I mentioned, among them, more than 45% uh, uh, were Jews. But anyway, mostly it was uh, Slavs people. And this is very important. Nazi don't have special policy, genocide policy against each Russian, Belarusian, or Ukrainian person. But anyway, mostly during the anti-partisans operation in these territories, uh, villages, uh, and uh, uh, some uh, in the cities, uh, uh, a lot of the population uh, was killed and died. Uh, this is uh, now a very big discussion in my country because totally 27 million uh, Soviets uh, disappeared during the second world, so-called disappeared, was killed, was put to the like labor uh, um, workers to Germany and some other countries. Some of them not come back to the Soviet Union, but we calculated that uh, they disappeared, okay. But how many of them was directly killed? How of them was uh, died uh, from hunger and illness and so on? How many children was not uh, appeared or died? Uh, this is a special question. And uh, we have some uh, project in our country uh, published the documents from uh, Russian archives uh, last year, 23 volumes from each region that's what occupied, occupied by Nazi archives preparing the volume, very important document. What is the problem for us? In this book, we don't have a chapter Holocaust. We don't mention special uh, uh, part of this book connected the fate of Jews. A lot of documents about the Jews, but in different places of this book. And today in my country, very popular is the slogan, genocide against all Soviet people. So we like come back to the Soviet slogan, the Jews were the Soviet civilians. We know, I published 20 years ago, these documents. 
about the Kiev, about Babi Yar. Uh, his Soviet newspapers in the October 1941 was a period information. 52 uh, Jews in Kiev, 52,000 Jews in Kiev was killed. And when in 1944, three years later, special information, special uh, announcement should be published, you could find in the party archives very interesting documents, very three times the word Jews was changed to the Soviet civilians. So we have some unique ex example how somebody changed the history. Jews became the Soviet civilians. And fortunately today, we are very close to repeating of the same situation. Bueno, doctor Ilia, volvemos a agradecerle su presentación, eh, las respuestas que volvieron a ser muy iluminadoras, e invitamos al eh, profesor Bruno Garbari a cerrar este encuentro. Thank you. Muchas gracias. Bien, muchísimas gracias eh, por, por esta por esta presentación, eh, por, por habernos ilustrado en estos aspectos de lo que ha sido el holocausto de la Unión Soviética en los territorios ocupados por los nazis, y eh, vamos a ir despidiéndonos, invitándolos a la al próximo encuentro que se llevará a cabo el martes 16 de noviembre a las 18 horas, donde tendremos el honor de escuchar al... Eh, a Yehuda Bauer, que nos hablará en su presentación sobre distorsión y negación del holocausto. Muchísimas gracias por habernos acompañado y nos veremos en el próximo encuentro.